the size is probably around 2,500 pounds of rice per day. Okay? And still and, like a rice. Yeah, and the thing is, um, the reason 2,500 pounds is because that machine may have a 5 horsepower compressor in it. And 5 horsepower is the maximum size they will make for single phase power. Yeah. All right? Anything over five hours, probably the next one up would be seven and a half, and that's clearly a three phase. And it's going to cost a lot. And it is, it is going to cost a lot more, but the um, power consumption overall, it pays back for itself, you know, in a shorter period of time. So you have to look, not all restaurant has three phase power supply available. Yeah. Most, most likely commercial buildings, they will have. 20 volts and 110 volts. But nobody guarantees that all commercial buildings will have three phase available. So that determines, you know, what size of machine. If you're going to buy one big or two small. Yeah, the organ size that have uh, obviously correspond to the size of the ice. Yes. The, you know, the more ice you need to make, the bigger everything will be. The bigger the, um, the bigger will be the cylinder, and then the bigger will be those ice, the evaporators to get the amount of ice harvested. So, sequence of operation in the thing. You guys know where the hot gas solenoid is normally hooked up in a hot gas defrost system, right? I'm going to go Just back to the manifold, if they're tied in together. All right, let's go to this. That thingy. Why did I put it so close? Mine's coming in, I know. Yeah. You give this one? Oh, yeah. Right, this is directional refrigerant flow. This section, guys, is a discharge line. So, in order to initiate harvest, you do this here. Let me put a red line. That might make a little bit more sense, right? Yeah, because we, we, we tap off of the uh, discharge line. So, this is my. This is metering device. So I will come here. You know what's that, right? Yeah. So um, normally we will have. The pressure switch capillary two broke one of the guys last night accidentally. So don't feel the night class screw up because both of you are my class. You know, if you're yeah, my class, yeah. you're the night class, right? Uh, you know, I will make sure they don't do anything to screw you. Uh, so, liquid line solenoid that's energized during normal ice making operation. When the system senses that there is enough ice here, it switches over into harvest mode. This closes, this opens, hot gas comes directly into this. And you notice the hot gas is piped down from the discharge downstream of the metering device and at the entrance of the evaporator. So it's basically between the metering device and the distributor if it's got one? Yes. Yeah, I remember. And the discharge side. 
Yeah. Which typical hot gas defrosters configure just like that too. This is a hot gas defrost system. Okay, only thing that call the targets so that they can charge your extra 500 bucks to the machine. Okay. The more impressive the name song, the more money you can charge. <laughs> Come on. That's, that's marketing, you know? And you see it every day. You know? I would do it. Verifying. Verifying. <laughs> Instead of checking the thermos, you're verifying yeah, controls. controls. <laughs> Sounds a lot better. Huh? Yes. Uh -huh. Morning. It's like instead of telling somebody, here, I have 20 years of experience in the field, say, listen, I have two decades of experience yeah. in the field. Oh, man. It's a summertime this year. Those are the fortunate ones, right? So, on the smaller machines, there is no suction accumulator because the, the compressive crankcase has no volume to be able to handle that liquid that's coming back. And like I said, on the bigger one, you will have a suction accumulator. And again, that suction accumulator will be, you remember where it is, right? Yeah. 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 That's a fact. My alarm didn't go off. Oh, that's the excuse now, right? Because yeah, I'm, saying, I'm usually here all the time. Um, by, the way, alarm, so, you know, by the way, um, and if we are going on the bigger machines, you will end up having a receiver in, in that too, a liquid um, receiver. Yeah, small self-contained, you know, those are, they're critical charge, most of those systems. So number one, they would not have a receiver or the um, suction accumulator. But here's the deal, guys. If, it's, if that machine, the data plate says, it takes 10.5 ounces. That's what, it takes. That's what we gotta weigh the charge. So in. That's why you really have to weigh the charges. Yes, because um, <coughs> if you don't, what's gonna happen during normalized making cycle? I will have ice forming thicker down here than up here because I'm kind of overcharged. And if I'm slightly on the charge, I'll have ice forming up here because the off right away. Yeah. here is going to be colder than down here. It's going to start to down Yes, and those two ice patterns I just mentioned, if you see that on the ice machine, it will tell you whether that machine is overcharged or undercharged. Just by the ice right? being on no. the bottom of the top. Yes, but here's the deal. I'm not going to say overcharge or undercharge in every situation. It could be that it's underfeeding or overfeeding too. If, if I'm, um, if the condenser coil is blocked, what's going to happen to my condenser pressure? It goes up. If condenser pressure goes up, what's going to happen to the pressure coming in you there? You have a big pressure it's drop. Gonna it's going to go up here. Therefore, the refrigerant will be doing all the cooling at the lower section. Yeah, um, so now I'm going to form ice at the lower section too. But then, <clears throat> that's not an overcharged situation. That's just too, too hot to <coughs> gas coming in here. Yeah, I need to clean my condenser coil. <coughs> so your head pressure and your subcooling will determine whether it's an overcharged condition or a or no, or a, a restricted condenser yeah, coil, so you don't get enough air. Yeah. All right. So now you use them. Right. And now on the flip side of that, if I'm fully charged, but I'm forming ice here, what can you determine from that? You form an ice where? I'm forming ice right at the entrance, and I'm having a high superheat. But there's a restriction. Right. So you see how 
Would the restriction now be in the in the evaporator somewhere? Or would it be in the most uh, likely the it's here device. Fil or the filter dryer? All right. So um, the thing is, superheat, sub cooling will tell you exactly whether it's a overcharge or a restricted system or whether it's um, your condenser needs cleaning or not. You so you see how it, the yes, symptoms. you see how the symptoms mimic each other yeah. and a lot of people think that situation <coughs> a bad um, condenser, restricted condenser coil or restricted airflow as can because your pressure is going to be high, they're going to remove some refrigerant and bring it down to the lower pressure where it's supposed to be when this machine is working. But you, we just did it, you undercharge the damn system. Yeah. So you ain't going to be mechanized anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, the machine is going to run like the energizer bunny and it ain't going nowhere. You know, it's like the whole big road runner um, kind of thing. Yeah. <coughs> So, um, we all know liquid flood back can damage the compressor, guys, but they kind of make it, make it sound so damn bad. Well, we were flooding liquid uh, refrigerant back and right into the suction line <coughs> without, a, without a restrictor, and you could hear it. You could hear the compressor. Yeah, um, here's... Cranking that liquid in there. Here's how these things, see the compressor crank is. It's like a storage container. Did you start that unit? Mm -hmm. Did you start right. that unit this and morning? There is a sort, it is designed to hold a sort amount of liquid with the drone. The gimmicks in there. The thing is, that compressor has been running for so long. The oil is hot, the whole body of that compressor is hot. So as soon as liquid hit that oil, it's going to begin to boil. Now, a little bit of liquid trickling back throughout the ice making cycle, that's not going to hurt it, guys. Because it is normal sometimes that we see a frost line forming. We wouldn't have this, but it's going to form right back up to the compressor. Frost line forming back to the compressor does not necessarily mean liquid is going back there. Remember, we are making ice. That refrigerant is boiling way below freezing point. So any moisture in the air is going to freeze, oh, just like right. it's making ice. Okay. So it's disregard, nice. unless the compressor amperage start creeping right up, and you start hearing knocking in that compressor. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, leave it alone. It hey, don't trouble, trouble. You know? Because you may try to address something, thinking there is a problem, but there is no problem. No. Whatever you go address well. may create a problem. <coughs> so that's why you don't need it. But that's frost. You said there's a difference between frost and real ice on that line. Yeah, but eventually what happens, you know, given a long enough run time, that will get hard because it's going to kind of melt with the air that passes across. And if the compressor is constantly, or if there is ice, ice build up there, yeah, you do have a problem. All right. And one of the problem is, believe it or not, this plate may look shine, you can look at the face in it, but it's coated with a very thin coating of algae and slime and what have you. And it restricts heat transfer. And if I restrict heat transfer in that, what's going to happen with my refrigerator? It's not going it's not gonna to freeze. freeze. Right, it's going to, the pressure is going to go way down low in the suction side, and I'm going to begin to get freeze back to the compressor. So these are the little things. Do not ever, ever put a gaze on this system until you determine what's causing it. One of the, actually 90, 95% of the problem in ice makers, the water circuit, and lack of, lack of cleaning the coil, the whole circulation system, the water circulation system, and condenser lack of cleaning <coughs> the compressor. In other words, negligence, 
and two housekeeping. Alright. That's what makes it so money, right? Yeah. Um, Do they usually have filters on the waterways? Yeah, they usually have filters, but filters can only take out sediments and certain things. You see, if you you have to do a water analysis to know what the heck is in that water there. And I've never seen a filter, or they never made one to my, the best of my knowledge, that can filter out every bit of crap that's in that water. Too much of chlorine can kill this. Mm. Believe it or not, too much of chlorine, because it's gonna to begin to eat the brass that's in there. And so, anyhow you look at it, something is gonna mess up. And typically, um, you change your filter whenever the pressure gets too low. I think 20 PSIG for most, most ice makers across the board. If the water supply drops below 20 PSIG, you need to change your filter or address that concern. Right? But we need it higher than that constantly because you're not getting the high enough water pressure all the ice will not drop off of that evaporator, some will remain. And then the new ice making cycle begin and builds ice on top of that. And eventually form a big block that cannot drop. And you have a problem. When you know the destructiveness of ice. When ice <coughs> builds up enough, it can break anything in its way. And the glaze, like a glaze. Yes, come on, if you put a sink there on a sink over Titanic. You think a little ice maker is anything good? No, it's good. I've seen it broke. These are um, evaporators. Just rip them apart. And there you look at it, you stand it up. Can a piece of ice really do this? You know, it's amazing what ice can do. And if you allow it to go more than one time, you may as well tell the customer, hey, you need to start saving some money to buy a new ice machine. So, what lack of uh, wa enough water can cause a freeze-up problem too, but they'll probably have a generalized freeze-up, not sectional freeze-up, okay. all right? Mm -hmm. So, because these machines, apart from the hot gas, they depend on the, the fresh supply of water coming in to help release that ice from here, because the fresh water is not gonna come and run over the ice you just made, it's gonna run behind the plate. It's gonna help separate it. And it, independent, it's not touching the ice, but because the water coming in is probably about 65 degrees, it's gonna release that ice from off of the plate. It, it, and it aids the hot gas. Yeah, it aids the hot gas, because the hot gas is um, just about, it begins, at about 32 degrees, and as it warms up, it goes 35, 40 degrees. And then that and water coming back trickles down to refill the... Yes, it refills the <coughs> reservoir. The reservoir, okay. All right. And now, now I think I explained this here, right? Yeah, that was See? because of the... <coughs> the they say here we holes, there are some tiny, very, very tiny holes on the evaporators where water sunk. Not significant amount, but some water will trickle just behind the ice after it starts to release. Because when that ice begins to release, it creates a suction between the plate and itself. And they don't want to release completely. So when the water gets in there, it breaks that vacuum and then it drops your ice off. Yeah. So, <coughs> what if you, what if you, when you, when you said that you'd have uh, gen problems with, if you had problems with the water flow, but when it's forming the ice, it's, you know, coming down, and say it's the cube one you showed us yesterday, where it's trickling down or, or uh, spraying at it, yeah. and forming it, uh, but there's not enough water, and your ice cubes are uh, becoming smaller and smaller. What's gonna happen, um, actually, let me answer that question. Right, I'm finishing okay. this, right? 
So now, um, again, when this machine goes into harvest to drop less ice, it do, all ice makers are designed to do this, not just one. All the water that was remaining in the sun, it's going to dump that water out, all the sediment, everything. So what I have, they have two ways of doing it. Hosasaki, they have the, their water pump is reversible and it has two discharge. It has one discharge if it goes clockwise to pump water up over the ice making um, evaporator. And when the machine reverses it, it pumps through the other discharge and send it, dump it into the drain. Flush. It flushes it out. And at the same time it's doing that and it's harvesting the fresh water valve opens or the makeup water, whatever you want to call it. That opens, that's a solenoid valve to a water valve like a uh, clothes wash at home. That opens and start feeding water into this system. Now, the flush is time for about a minute, maybe 90 seconds. And then that flush valve throws, or in the case of Hosozaki, the water pump turns off. And then the sump will fill up to when a float switch tells it, hey, I'm seeing water in here and it's at the right level, let me stop water from coming in. Then it goes back into the ice making. It's a batch cycle. Ice. Cycle, right. So it is a batch, whatever is filled in that. Some, you some. Yeah, so whatever it's used now, it's, it's gonna make up that whole batch. Everything in the sun. Yes. All the water. As soon as the flow hits. Yeah. It's gonna and it's gonna make ice until about maybe, it, there is a set, um, manufacturer setting where it does not go below that setting. Because we don't, you don't want the sediments. We don't want the sediments getting sucked up and make ice up out of that. Because I, I have seen ice makers where, did they clean it? I actually went, the last one I went to, they had this ice machine for two and a half years. And there was no cleaning of the ice making system. And they started running from them. Where the, the pieces, whatever was there, dried off. And the wet ones let go, get into the sun, get pumped in, and it freeze in between the ice. It's not freezing. But it's the ice wrap around it now when it, the cube was being made. So when they serve the drinks, people are seeing this nice little black thing floating around. So I went there and I, all the machine needed was a cleaner, but it took three hours to clean the machine because you gotta hand brush it. We have a paintbrush and whisk brush. Like if you're washing a car tire with all the rim. You know, if you go with the rims and they have spokes in the rims, you gotta wash one by one. That's exactly how I have to do it. Take that machine completely apart. Right. Yeah. <coughs> I use the EU brush they sell. It's like yeah, that's a chimney. A, it's a chimney. So. Just you, yes, I use the brush, the tube uh, brush. So, uh, <coughs> now when, <coughs> when this, Machine uh, finish harvesting, when the ice is released and it drop, the last piece or whatever, we, we must have a way of um, knowing or telling, letting the machine know that, hey, I need to go back in the ice making cycle. All right, as now, soon as the sun with the, um, yeah, with the Manitowoc machine there, <laughs> this is the ice making, Evaporator so and there's a plastic bin. There's a plastic cover the over it. Right? Where, yeah, where the <coughs> cubes are being formed, and that's to prevent water from spilling into the bin and melting whatever ice you made. Now, on that bin, on that bin cover, it's like it's hanging like this. And remember, I showed you. Remember I showed you this here? This, and this is the same thing, right? And right over here, there's a bin cover. And it comes on like this. Right here, there's a magnet. And behind here, embedded in the plastic, 
is a magnetic switch. That's a single pole on and off switch. So when, <coughs> when this is done, which is an ice making cycle, this switch throws. When the ice drops off of this, see it slides out and it opens this and it goes down. And then it when, it it go, when it goes down here and break, it breaks that contact, it opens here, it signals the board that uh, hey, I just drop the, ice. drop the ice here. Then if this stays like that, the, the board is going to go back into ice making cycle and it's going to go there for at least one minute. And if it does not see this close back, it's going to shut down the machine because it, it will figure that ice is stuck here. Mm -hmm. Meaning, the bin is full. Okay, because that's the only thing that will cause ice to stop here, the ice back up so much. So, when you begin to use ice now, when this drops down there, this closes back to that point, and the board sees it, it goes back into the ice making cycle, and it goes through that cycle all over again. Now, this bridge thickness sensor, that's the reason that the water can't be too pure, right? Yes. Is the, the, the current won't pick up. Yes, because now this sensor, what the water does is it forms a switch. The water is acting as a switch, and if it's too pure, it cannot form the switch or the path for electricity to travel to. So it's not going to see that there is ice here, even though there is ice. So you need some impurities in there. In other words, when just when all the bottle of water and water are you they tell you it's pure yeah. drink it? Oh, no. It's got crap in it. Yeah, it all, it all. And everybody knows in this room that if the water don't have some kind of crap, it don't taste good. <laughs> <laughs> Serious. Hey. You know? Now you had asked me a question. Yeah. What was it if you don't mind reminding me? Well, I was asking you <coughs> about the forming of the ice. Yes. Yeah, say, say you got your, your water coming in and it's spraying just the same same one we had there. You mentioned several differences. That's what I want. It's spraying the the water and you're getting ice cubes and not big enough. Like that. It's staying like that. So it kept on going. It kind of kept on falling off the book. In other words, the tray's not filled up? The tray is not, it, you got water going in there, but the tray is leaving okay. like that, right there. Okay, here's what happened with these here. And this is, this is true for every machine regardless of the manufacturer. If this happens, after one hour, because a normal ice making cycle under normal conditions is about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. If after one hour that machine does not see that door that I just drew here yeah. open, which indicates that it made a batch of ice, the machine itself will go into harvest. And it will get all this ice off of there. Then it goes back into the ice making cycle. It made ice like this again after one hour it can't see a harvest. It goes and it harvests that. Oh, and it does it three times. The machine itself does it three times. And if on the third attempt, after the third attempt, the same condition exists, it shuts itself down. I forgot. And then, then the idiot light comes on and it blinks twice. <laughs> Blinking twice means you, it did not go into a harvest. Right? It did not detect the, uh, detect the harvest. So the idiot light comes on. And it blinks right. And don't worry, when you open the door of the machine, it will yeah, tell you yeah. it will tell you how many blinks means what. Yeah. You know? The IFC. I mean yeah. how much more simpler than that you want. Even the Hosazaki machines, they have the same thing. This this is what Mani this is Manitoba and um, uh, isomatic. Ha make ice like this, this the rectangular. Alright? And both of those Remember I said they had to be poles to assist with this? Now what these manufacturers are doing, they put a plunger behind here. Depends on the size of the evaporator, maybe two plunger. 
One will be air actuated, that when the machine goes into harvest after one minute has passed, and a small, very, very tiny air compressor comes on and blow air behind here. So that releases the suction, it neutralizes the suction. With um the kiln back. Yes. With the what was the other ice maker name I just called? Oh, you Isomatic or Isomatic. Isomatic has a, a little actuator motor like a tire. It actually works like your windshield wiper motor like this, right? And that has a plunger that comes in and push the whole block of ice out. And that drops it. So they have they have as a cyst we call it. Okay? And it makes it makes life easier, but um, diagnosis is kind of a little bit more difficult, you know, because you don't really know what's happening. And these things, they are in the tightest spot, hard to see, because you have to take off the side panel, and most people have something on that side of the machine and this side of the machine, and more often than not on top of the machine too. They use the ice machine as a storage area, so. Yeah, these little machines that are big, giant, wide, or yeah, you know, and they have the steel door on. Yeah, I have. And you open the door up, and it's yes, just I have machines. It. I have machine in my shop. I can make um, twenty pound of ice per day, right up to tw to twenty five hundred pounds. Why? What do you, what do you make an ice for? It's summer. What do people make ice in the summertime for? Yeah, well, I pulled it out an old one. Keep the beer well, what, you pull it out and you, you rebuild it or something? <coughs>